If I had a chance on my flight to really look at the universe in a very, very different way, uh, there was a, a portion of the orbit around the moon where I was shadowed from both the Earth and the Sun. That gave me a view of the universe out there that I did not expect. There were so many stars that I could not pick out the bright stars that we used as navigation stars. It was just a blur of light in the window. And it got me thinking about what, what do we know about the rest of the universe? The space enterprise depends on new technology, new ideas, new experiments, new instruments. And the University of Michigan has been very prolific in generating all of those things. We've flown many instruments in space. In fact, we have a couple instruments in space right now going to the planets. We've had many astronauts. We've had an Apollo crew where everybody on the crew was graduate of the University of Michigan. On my mission, Carl Hanais had earned his PhD here at the University of Michigan. So the University of Michigan's played a big role in the space program and continues to play a role. Five, all three engines up and burning. Two, one, zero, and lift off. Roger roll. Do humans have a place in space? That's a great question. Human exploration of space is really the most difficult enterprise, the most difficult endeavor we of a species have ever done and are likely to do. In my opinion, uh, the space program uh, is a genetic drive that humans have to go into space to find a place that's going to be safe for them when we can't live here anymore. We want to know more about where we came from, where we're going, trying to improve you know, how we live, we're always uh, looking and exploring and going further and further. And of course, you know, it doesn't hurt to see these dazzling nebulas and stars from our telescopes, you know, winking at us. We go into space uh, to explore new, new, new areas, new, new planets. Uh, you know, Mars will be the next one. However, to me, the important thing about exploring space is developing the capability to do it. Uh, there's a lot of technology that has to be developed. How do we live in a microgravity environment or do we generate our own gravity environment, say through spinning systems? And we've got to figure out how to keep people alive for long periods of time. And how do we manage living in a high radiation environment? The development of the technology that goes into the program is as important as the program itself. There are some studies that show, for example, for every dollar that was invested in the Apollo program, uh, that spurred about $20 of uh, expenditures uh, through businesses through the development of advanced technologies. So there are a variety of technologies that spun out of the Apollo program. Battery technology, computer technology, weather prediction, solar panels, GPS, artificial uh, heart pumps, better cell phones, silicon chips. So all of these things have changed the way we live and we take it for so, so much for granted that we, uh, we don't see them as new. There's one aspect about space travel that I, I often think about, and that's uh, really tied to the human spirit side of things. People who are sort of at a, a certain age, certain generation, often will point to the space program as what motivated them, in fact, to do well in school and to do their studies. Everybody was so excited to, you know, see these few men who went up there and did something that had never been done before, something hard. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. When humans first landed and walked on the moon, we were all huddled around this small TV. And we saw these ghost-like images of these people landing and walking on the moon. And we're you know, excited about it, and we should be able to go back to that. When this country gets energized to do something, there are no holds barred. They're going to do it, and they're going to do it well, and they're going to do it quickly, and they're going to do it efficiently, and, and they're going to succeed. And we need that challenge today. I would say we're at a, a major crossroads um, in our will to become a spacefaring nation. Are we forever limited to this envelope of the Earth, or will there be a time when we, in any significant numbers, move off the Earth? I would tell a student that's at Michigan today to have faith. It's not going to be too long in the future before we're going to get this space program going again. Even now, uh, they will be making a decision on the heavy launch vehicle 
uh, by about 2015 or 16, and that's going to put uh, some Michigan graduates right in the beginning of the real space program. I get to be right at the forefront of um, all the te technology we're developing. And I think they're going to be absolutely at the start of something that we can't even dream of today. There's no limit. Whatever we can think of, we can figure out a way to do it. Yeah, hey, the space program is going to come back. It's going to come back roaring back. It's going to be a big program, and you're going to be sitting in the catbird seat when it does.